this has been a wonderful day. You know, thinking about all the things that's happened here, it's overwhelming. Because when I came here, I was a very young girl. I was born in North Carolina in a small town in a holler with brothers and sisters. I was the youngest of 12. We grew up very modestly with a Christian mother and daddy that loved us and took care of us. And, you know, even though we didn't have a lot, we had a lot of love. And my daddy was, I was a daddy's girl. And he taught me about Jesus and he sang. He would sit in his chair and he would sing songs. And I loved music because of my daddy. So I've always loved music. I've always loved the choir. So when we came to Johnson City, I loved it. And I went to stay with my sister Lucille. And I came to church on that first Easter Sunday with my sister and her family. And there was, I think, 34 that day joined the church. And I joined with them. And I told my mom and daddy I joined the church. And from that time on, it was just something about this church. It was special because God put it here. Man did not. You walk through those doors, the sweet Holy Spirit would come over you. And it's that way to this day. And I thank God we're so blessed that we can come and worship him and give him honor and glory. And I don't ever want to come in here and not give him that praise that he so richly deserves. And I just love all of you, and I ask you to worship him tonight like you've never done it before, because we're blessed children, and one day very soon, we're going to be with Jesus in our eternal home. Won't that be wonderful? We get to see Jesus and be reunited with all of our friends and all of our loved ones. Thank you for being here. We love you all. tonight. Uh, some might be here that doesn't know me, but my name's Troy Garland. I started coming to church here in 1973. I've been here ever since. But uh, I just want to give God the glory tonight, and I've got a testimony that's really hard to give. It really is. Uh, I break down, and I can't help it. I, I need your prayers, and please pray for me. Brother Kevin there is a friend of mine, him and his wife, and me and Brian Burton was at the hospital when his daughter was born. She's, what, 26 now? Uh, 21. 21 years old. But I've known Kevin for many, many years. He's a, I love Kevin. Wife, but our pastor, we got one of the best pastors in, around anyway. And, uh, I, I brag on our pastor every chance I get, and uh, we should, and we ought to tell him we love him. I love you all. Uh, just in case you don't know, uh, I worked at the fire department in Johnson City for 26 years. Retired from the fire department. Just about every firefighter's got a part-time job. Uh, I had a part-time job, and uh, that's where my tragedy in my life began. Uh, February the 28th, uh, 1998. I thought, Lord, after that happened, if I'd have just stayed at home, it might not have happened. But uh, God had a plan in it. He took a tragedy that happened in my life and turned it into something good. But before I tell you this, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. I want to give God the glory. Well, let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this day that you've given us. Help me, Lord, to get through this testimony. Lord, I just want to give you the glory. You deserve it all, Heavenly Father. You've been so good to me. You've blessed me, Lord, with many blessings in this life. I want to thank you right now and uplift your precious holy name because you certainly are worthy. There's a little bit of scripture here I want to read before I finish this testimony. 
but uh, <clears throat> you'll see here in a minute that it is, it's a hard testimony, it's hard to get through. But uh, God's still good to me, and I love him. I thank him for being so kind to me and his great love. It's a love that we can't explain, God's love, so great. I can't explain it, but I know it's the greatest love that's ever been known to mankind. Uh, the scripture here says, uh, it's in uh, Philippians chapter 4, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. How true that is. Thank God for the word. And, I, and uh, anyway, like I said, February the 25th, 1998, and that still burns in my memory. Uh, this, uh, I was, uh, I went into work that morning. I was supposed to be moving heavy equipment. Well, they said it wasn't ready to be moved, so he wanted me to take a dump truck out and haul a load of dirt. So I went out on the Kingsport Highway with a load of dirt, and it was early in the morning. I come back, I dumped a load of dirt and come back and I was right at Thorn Chapel Road. Highway 36 was two lanes at that time. And uh, I got there at Thorn Chapel Road and there was uh, two cars stopped. One was turning left on Thorn Chapel Road. My truck that I was driving, I couldn't get it stopped. I didn't hit that car in the back end, but when I hit the brakes, I went over into the other lane, crossed over the center lane, and a young lady, didn't know it at the time, it was my neighbor. She hit that truck. I was crossways of the road. She hit that truck right where the fuel tank is. And uh, she lost her life. And uh, didn't know it at the time, she was pregnant too. And she lost her life and, and that child lost its life but uh, you know God took something I said like it was a tragedy in my life and made something good out of it to tell you this uh, uh, her father-in-law and mother-in-law lived close to me and her husband and his dad came to my house that night and hugged my neck and told me he didn't hold anything against me and uh, what, what love and what a great heart he had and uh, he had to have the love of God in his heart he couldn't do that and, uh, anyway two weeks after that happened uh, his uh, mother told me he said somebody hung a note on her door that they had got saved because of that tragedy you see God took a tragedy that happened in my life and made something good out of it somebody got saved I praise God for that. But, you know, it's something that I'll have to live with as long as I'm here on this earth. But God has given me the strength and the courage to get through it, you know. And uh, I thank him for that. And then in uh, 2016, our daughter lives in Utah. Uh, she had a, a bleed in her brain. And uh, my wife was already out there. And... Uh, she called me on a Saturday and said, you better come out here. Uh, they're going to do surgery on Sheila. And uh, I got on the plane from Sunday morning and left and went to Utah. And uh, they operated on her on Monday. And uh, I was able to lead her to the Lord before she went down to surgery. Thank God for that. And. Uh, I request your prayer for her still, though she's not, uh, they, they can't do anything for the problem that she's got in her brain, and uh, she's got, they said, a lot of protein in her brain, and uh, she's already had another bleed, and uh, she's had a seizure, uh, she's got inflammation in her brain, and uh, she's a very strong person, though, still working, thank God for that. 
God's been good to me, and I just want to praise him, uplift his precious holy name. Please pray for her. I know that she'll, uh, God's will will be done in her life. You know, that's what I want. I just pray that God's will be done. But thank you all for this. Uh, it's a hard testimony to get through. It really is. But uh, God's still good to me, and I love him, and I thank him for loving me and for allowing me to give my testimony here tonight. I know. But, you know, uh, I told her husband I wished it had been me instead of her. I really do. I wished uh, it had been me, my life instead of hers. You know, she's a young lady, 26 years old. But uh, it's really sad, but as far as I know, she was ready to meet the Lord. You know, I know that baby's in heaven with the Lord. But uh, I thank you all. See somebody raise the mic up for me. For you folks that don't know, my name is Brian Burton. Been at this church uh, since January of '84, uh, and uh, I get up here once in a while. It's a little awkward tonight. I normally tell a preacher joke. Now, he's sitting right over there. <laughs> anyway, I'll cut it kind of short. Uh, he, uh, Curtis was riding on an airplane. And I'm a pilot, so I've been I've been in a few messes in the thunderstorms and stuff. And he got caught in a thunderstorm, and it's real rough. And uh, somebody said, "There's a preacher on board here." And uh, so they said, a "Preacher, do something." He took up an offering. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> when he asked me to give my testimony. Uh, I don't hardly know where to start, but I guess I ought to start with uh, back when I was born. I was born at a very young age. <laughs> You'll get that in a minute. <laughs> no, but uh, what, uh, what I really want to talk about a little bit is a conversion and, uh, and then what happened to me because I've heard testimonies here of people, how things that God puts things in your life that you don't expect. And uh, boy, did he ever throw me a curveball. But uh, anyway, I was in the Air Force, joined the Air Force. I was 17 on Sunday. On Monday, I was in the recruiting office. On Wednesday, I was sworn in. Friday, I was in the middle of basic training. And by the time six months rolled around, I was in Europe. And uh, I spent a good portion of my time overseas. I actually had 27 and a half years. But uh, so I spent a good portion of my time overseas, even found Anne over in Germany. Uh, but uh, she was standing beside the road one day, and I picked her up. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> didn't happen exactly that way. But anyway, she's here with me. It has been for a long time. But uh, I spent a good portion of the time overseas, and... Uh, the job I had, I could not, uh, they didn't assign me to the States. Every time I come to the States, I was, I was frozen to the base for 12 months, and then I know I was going back overseas. So I decided I'd put in for recruiting duty, and, of course, there was a long story about that, but uh, I, they told me I couldn't do it. But I wound up in Johnson City as a recruiter. And uh, so come here in 72, uh, our middle son, which most of you don't see very much because he's up in Washington, D.C. area, but... Uh, he was on his sixth birthday that we checked in over uh, right across the street from uh, R.C. and Shirley Williams. And I remember uh, Shirley said, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> but anyway, a uh, little church down the street from uh, over on uh, Knob Creek Road. Not Knob Creek Road, uh, Indian Ridge Road. And uh, we started sending the boys. And as far as I know, me and Ann had never talked about church. We never talked about anything uh, about going to church or being a Christian or anything like that. And we started sending those boys that we had two at the time. And uh, so uh, 
One, I was out mowing the grass one Sunday morning, and I told her, I went in and told her, I said, send those boys to church. It's not going to do much good if we don't go. So we ought to start going to church, and we did. Long story short, a year or so later, uh, I guess, but uh, I would got transferred. It was going to transfer me. I'd been here for a little over four years, and it was going to transfer me to Nashville. And uh, so I got saved uh, over there. I'd made up my mind that I was going to get saved on Sunday, and and it was, I was kind of in a bind with this. Ann's mom was here. She didn't speak English, but she would go to church with us. And I hadn't talked to Ann about it, so I didn't know what was going to happen when I go down front and, and uh, ask the Lord to save me. But anyhow, I did that. And uh, so they asked me to say a few words, and I was about as scared then as I am right now, or I am right now as I was then. And uh, so anyway, uh, they, the church broke up. I said a few words, and and go back and Anne is sitting in the seat uh, everybody else is getting up to leave and uh, I said to her I said uh, you ready to go and she said no and uh, then I said you know I didn't understand what was going on I said uh, do you want to go up front she said yeah and boy I was really then surprised because I certainly didn't know what to do so hey preacher come here <laughs> so uh, anyhow she went up after church was uh, uh, and she gave her life to the Lord. So me and her the same day. Uh, the next Sunday, me, her, and the two boys, the two boys had already got saved, and uh, we all was baptized the, the same day. And uh, the next week, we was on our way to Nashville, and we checked in down there in August of 76. Uh, and uh, went to three or four churches, and we settled on one, and uh, we'd been there about... It was a free will Baptist church. We weren't looking for one, but we just uh, we wound up in a free will Baptist church and uh, had a Navy guy teaching the Sunday school class, and I was in that. And you know, the Navy guys. Kind of, if you're any Navy here, I'm going to say something about you. You're a little, a little, a little weird. He was a little, <laughs> he was a little weird, and uh, I was Air Force, by the way. And uh, so uh, he said, "We need a Sunday school teacher, and I'm going to nominate Brian Burton." I said, "No, man, no." Everybody, good idea. So they nominated me to be the, be the teacher. And I went to him, I said, you are absolutely crazy. He said, why? I said, you know how long I've been a Christian? He said, no. I said, about six weeks. He said, good, I'd like to have you teach next Sunday. <laughs> so I went home, told Ann, I said, I guess I'll be sick. I don't know what I'll do, but I, 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 can't, go down, I can't go down there. But then I got to thinking about this. I said, now I've taken on the responsibility. I've told the Lord I was going to live for him. And, uh, and I, I don't know how I'm going to do with that, but I'm going to go, and I'm going to do the best I can. Well, I went down and I taught that class. If you all want to hear it, I could do it tonight. <laughs> I still remember it. Sweat running down my back and all that. So uh, uh, right after I got done, the Sunday school uh, superintendent come to me, and he said, I heard, I heard you done a good job in there. I said, I don't know. I did the best I could. He said, you see that Sunday school room right over there? And I said, yeah. He said, that's young adults. He said, uh, young married couples. He said, they need a teacher. He said, I'd like to have you go over and teach for them next Sunday. They're going to vote on somebody. They voted me in as a teacher, and I taught that class for seven years. But I'll tell you what, when I found out who they were, they were two-thirds of them was going to Bible college. They knew more about the Bible, and I didn't know where Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was. <laughs> and <clears throat> so, uh, but anyway, here's something I learned. If God is going to give you a job to do, he is going to equip you to do it if you will take the job. So if you don't take anything else away from what I'm saying tonight, you take that with you because uh, he opened that door for me. I don't know if it has anything at all to do anything with it or not, but the literature we're using took uh, seven years to go through the Bible, and it went almost to the week of the seven years because I retired and I moved back to Johnson City back across from R.C. and Shirley, but uh, showed up here at this church in uh, January, and uh, we'll come back in December, and uh, we showed up here in uh, January, and uh, I told Dan, I said, Dan, uh, I said, uh, I've been a teacher, if you need one, uh, I said, I'd be available if you, if you need one. He said, yeah, matter of fact, we do. He said, got, te uh, got a class we'd like you to teach. Teenagers. I said, who? He said, teenagers. He said, 10th, 11th, 12th graders. I said, well, I'll try. 
And I wound up teaching that uh, class for five or six years. What a blessing those kids were for me. They really were. But I've uh, moved into the one I'm teaching now, and I've been here for the rest of the time. I, you can do the multiplication on that and see uh, how long I've been at it, but a long time. But long about uh, in 97, uh, I had a fellow in my class by the name of Garland Music. Garland Music uh, had been law enforcement all his life and he was down at the Washington County Jail. And uh, one day I, I, I told him, I said, I'll stop by and visit with you one day. Was down. He ran a place called the Workhouse. And uh, I stopped in, talked with him, and that was another page in my life that I didn't expect. I uh, walked in there and was talking to that little short black man about that tall Calvin Goldwire. Got talking with him, he's Christian. Here he is locked up, he's mopping the floor. And uh, so we got to talk about the Lord and, and uh, I, I asked Garland, I said, Garland, any chance of coming down here and doing a Bible study? He said, yeah, I don't see any reason we can't do that. Uh, when do you want to do it? So I said, well, Thursday night. We started doing that and uh, he didn't say a word, Garland didn't say a word to anybody. And so uh, here I'm illegal as I can be in that place other than he, he went with me. and. Uh, but after I'd done it for a month or two, he said, I guess we ought to be legal and go ask the people and set it up. And we did it paperwork-wise then. But I still go to that jail <clears throat> uh, twice a week. I started out once, and now I go twice. I go Mondays and Thursdays. And y'all might have a problem here because uh, I don't leave the jail until uh, about 9.30, quarter 10. <laughs> so uh, that take me a while here. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'll give you just a rundown there's been a lot of people saved down there this year. I don't know how many. I don't try to keep track of it. But I'll give you, about a month ago, uh, we had uh, 19 people come out. It's, uh, they can come out if they want to, and they put us in a, in a room. And uh, So after the service, I always give an altar call. And there was two guys that said they want to come forward. They come up, and I said, sit here with me, and we'll talk about it. And we're going to pray. When I asked if the other people wanted to come and pray with us, 17 of the 18 got up and come up and prayed with us. And before it was over with, the 18th one was there. And uh, the week after that, we had 15, and all 15 of those come up. And uh, so the Lord has blessed me in that ministry down there. It is really something that uh, how he's moving in that jail. And uh, I'm so thankful for it. But uh, this church... Has, uh, has supported me. Well, a lot of the people come here, and they're always treated with respect. And nobody ever says anything at all about them if they've got tattoos or anything else that maybe that we don't look at as being right up to snuff. Uh, but the church has always supported me in my ministry down there, and I'm so thankful for the church, for our pastor. I know they've been bragging on him. I like to tell jokes on him, but... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, I'm so thankful for this church and what it's done for me. So God bless you. I'm having a good time tonight. Enjoy that singing, the testimonies. And I thought of something, you know, of all nights for Troy and Brian to testify. God reminded me of something that, you know, Buffy and I had come here a little bit. And, you know, we were young and we really wasn't in church at the time. And. And Brian and Troy came to our apartment in Jonesboro, <laughs> invited us to come back to church. 
And, and we stayed here until, until I started pastor. And I tell you, I, I, to this day, I, I appreciate those men for doing that because I, I needed that. Amen. And uh, amen. And I, I appreciate Brother Curtis. He, he's been a great pastor to me and a great friend. And as long as I live, I'll, con, I'll, I'll consider him as my pastor. Amen. Because he, he's been such a blessing to me. Let's turn in our Bibles tonight to the book of Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I'm going to read one verse as our text, verse number 10, Acts chapter 16, and verse number 10 says, And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit that we feel tonight. God, we thank you for all the wonderful songs that we've heard, for how our heart has been thrilled, Lord, to be in your house in this wonderful place of what it means to us. God, we ask your blessing on the reading of your word, Lord, that you would touch your people and speak to your people according to thy will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, I'm going to give you the title in just a minute. I, uh, I just want to kind of get into the introduction and say that it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you tonight. And every time I come into this sanctuary, you know, I'm in awe of the meaning of this place, the, the times that we've had here, Buffy and I, and, and there's no place, you know, when I come in and see these banners, I, I, I love this place. Uh, like like uh, Sister Gail said about feeling the Holy Spirit when you come here, every, every time I guess I've ever been here, I felt the Holy Spirit. And I sure do appreciate that. Well, I'm not going to try to preach a message to you tonight to impress you or to, uh, because I figure uh, with your pastor, you've already heard him. Amen? So uh, I'm just going to preach a simple message to you tonight that God's laid on my heart. I want to talk to you about divine direction. Divine direction. In order for there to be divine direction, there must first of all be Christian discipline, Christian discipline. When I think about this church and think about coming home to grace and the wonderful work that, that God does here, uh, I think about how the Word of God is preached and how, you know, the, the, all the blessings here, how, you know, we think about coming to grace, we think about how the choir sings and and the special singing and, and, and all the things that go on. None of those things happen without divine direction. God has to be in that. Amen. So it's not by accident. It's because the Lord's leading it. So let's talk about Christian discipline. Matthew chapter 16 Verse number 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Well, in this text of Matthew, uh, where it's written, Jesus declared who he was and, who his, and, and his work. He declared who he was and he declared his work. Well, Jesus and work go together. Amen. Uh, when Jesus left heaven, it wasn't a leisure trip. Amen. It was a work trip. He came to this earth 
for you and I that we could know him in the free pardon of sin. Well, you think about that. that for us to carry our cross, it takes work. It's hard. It, it's harder to walk by faith. It takes a lot more work to walk by faith than it does by sight. Amen? Because we have to trust God and follow him. Well, so divine direction what it does is divine direction does not leave you with any other options. Divine direction places you in the one place that you need to be to follow Christ and see him move and work. So we come to the second thing tonight and we see there's some things we need to consider here in our text of Acts chapter 16, what Paul is talking about here. You see the early church they were known for depending upon the leadership of the Holy Spirit for the future of the church and the ministry and the decisions of the church. Paul depended upon and he was aware of the Holy Spirit. Well, here's a challenge for you tonight. How, how well do we listen to the Holy Spirit? You see, you and I, we're just as important to God as Paul was. Now see, when, when I get to heaven, I, I don't, I'm not going to look at Paul and think, boy, I'm just as good. I, I don't think I'm just as good. But what I'm telling you is God loves us just as much as he did Paul. Amen? So, so we're just as important. Well, the 16th chapter of Acts tells us three times that they were specifically led in verse 6, they were forbidden to preach in Asia, and then they were told not to go to Bithynia. Well, Paul received a vision. Then the third thing, Paul received a vision to go to Troas and to Macedonia. Well, he received a vision in Troas to go to Macedonia. And this is a great example of divine direction. So here we see Paul and Timothy and Luke. This is who's on the scene. We, we go back to our text, Acts 16, verse 10. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Well, that word assuredly, in the Greek, it means to bring together means to lay aside, to compare, or consider. Well, whatever we do as servants of God, we've got to ask and move on faith and be assured by God. You see, isn't it good when we come into God's house and bring together each other, come together together, when we lay aside our differences and things that's not going to matter anyway when we get to eternity, when we consider God's divine direction, you see, that leads us to the next thing, and that is commitment. We've got to be committed to God. When, when you know, I, I, I know you know what, what it is to see the Holy Spirit move and lead. But you know, that doesn't just happen without commitment to God. You see, they were committed to God's plan before this and after this consideration was made. In order to find God's will in our lives, we must be willing to surrender ours. God will not show us his will unless we agree to do his will. You see, and some, somebody might say, well, how, how does that work? Well, it works like this. When you really want to be in God's will, you say, you come to God, something like this, and you say, God, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to. God, I don't care what it is. I just want to serve you. And Lord, I'm laying out my heart before you. 
And if you do that, God will use you. But you better not say that if you're not willing to do whatever God tells you to do. Because the way God works a lot of times, he doesn't call you, always call you to do what you think he's going to do. You might say, well, I'm ready to do this, and I'm ready to do that. God says, well, I want you to do this. Wait a minute, God, I wasn't ready for that. When you pray that prayer, you better be ready, amen, to follow God and do his will. You see, we must honestly and sincerely do what God's leading us to do, regardless of the circumstances we're in. Verse 10 says, immediately we endeavored to go. So that leads me to say this before I get to the last point. That leads me to say this, delayed obedience is disobedience. You know, you ever have kids growing up and you say, take out the trash. Well, you walk by three hours later and the trash is falling in the floor and you say, hey, I thought I told you to take out the trash. Well, I'm going to, I just hadn't done it yet. Well, when you told them to do it, that's when you wanted them to do it, amen? That's the way God is. God does not tell us to do something at our leisure. When God calls us, that's the time to go, amen? All right, well, I told Curtis I was going to preach 45 minutes. I'm going to have to stretch it out a little bit. I'm just kidding. I don't preach it. Well, we see number four tonight confirmation from God. You see, when you do what God is calling you to do, God will give you confirmation. God does some things sometimes. He does them in different ways, but the Holy Spirit will give you that sweet presence to let you know you're in the right place. Well, for them in our text, we, we want to look at verses 11 and 12. You know, we've read verse 10 twice that they went. Verse 11, here's what happened. Here's, here's the confirmation God gave them. Therefore, loosened from Troas, we came with a straight course to, to uh, Samothracia, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony, and we were in that city, abiding certain days. You see, God blessed them right here with divine direction. You know, even the testimonies that we heard, Brother Brian, Brother Troy, there was divine direction in their lives. Brother Mike that led the singing. But here we see it tonight. From Troas to Neapolis, was about 150 miles. But here, here's what happened. They prayed. You know, God said, don't go here. Don't go here. Here's where I want you to go. And, and what, what did it say? It said, well, they waited around till the weekend was over, till they did everything. they No, that's not what it said, is it? It says, immediately they went. Immediately. Well, you see, this same trip in Acts chapter 20 said it took them five days. But here in Acts 16, it only took them two days because God blessed them. God made the way straight for them. You see, sometimes God allows storms in our lives to strengthen us. But I just wonder if we knew, there's no way we'll ever know how many storms God has removed from our life before they got to us. Amen. You know, God's good to us, and God knows what he's doing. God's people do a lot better when they totally surrender to the Holy Spirit of God, when we quit struggling with the direction of God and we commit to his ways, we'll have less struggles of our own making. You see, sometimes life's rough. Amen. Sometimes we suffer hardships. Sometimes we have to pass through the swelling of the Jordan 
and go through the deep places of suffering. But with God's divine direction, we know that he gives us the peace that passes all understanding. And he's the power within our wings that allows us to go through the storms of life and to be victorious. You see, that, that leads us to this, and we're going to close in just a minute. Romans eight twenty eight, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. You see, we may not always know the will of God in our lives at times. I mean, sometimes things change in our life, and we might not know what to do. But when we come to that bridge, when we come to that fork in the road, we must continue on and trust him for his insights and understandings until he shares with us his plan for us. When you get to a place and you don't know what to do, just keep doing what you know God told you to do until he gives you further direction. You see, Paul used the word for lead, to be, or for le, to be led, excuse me. To be led tells us that we should be willing to let the Holy Spirit lead us in every part of our lives. We should be surrendered to him that where he tells us to go or what he tells us to do or, or whatever it is. We should simply be willing to be obedient and to follow him. God's plan for you is perfect. Whatever he tells you to do, it's for your own benefit. Whatever you need, God will provide it. May not be the way you thought, may not be what you wanted, but God loves you and he cares for you. Amen. We love you. It's good to be with you tonight. Thank you, brother. I love you. I appreciate you. Tonight you may be here and God is speaking to you right now. All these testimonies, all these songs, there's been enough, enough gospel here to save the world tonight through songs and preaching and testimony. Maybe tonight God is dealing with your life. I don't know what it's about. I don't know what you're going through. But maybe right now God is dealing with your heart. And you know the only answer to your problem is, as Brother Kevin says, leadership through the Holy Spirit. So tonight you're here and God is dealing with you. Maybe you just need to come and pray. Maybe you're praying for someone in your family. Maybe you're praying for a friend or a child. I'm going to ask you to step out from where you are right now and come. You're not by yourself. People are coming. Would you come right now and just pray and ask the Lord to help you? You may be here tonight and you've never been saved. And God led you this way for that very purpose tonight in your life, to give your heart to Jesus. I'm going to ask you to come right now and ask the Lord to save you. I will pray with you or one of these pastors here in this church will pray with you. If you'll come right now. If you'll come right now. We'll wait just a moment.